how do we perceive automated vehicles? What do we think of them? And how do or can we like them? In this video we will discuss the interaction between automated vehicles and vulnerable road users, such as pedestrians and cyclists, but also the users of automated vehicles and the general public. First of all, let's make a distinction between some types of automated vehicles and what we expect them to look and drive like. First, the most common one, the car. This one already looks a bit off, don't you think? For one, there is no driver or it looks to be in the wrong seat. Also, there are lots of cameras, lasers and whatnot attached to that car. It's looking quite strange. With such a strange looking car without a driver, I don't know how to communicate with it. Will it communicate with me somehow? A second type, automated buses, usually also come without a driver, but then have a steward instead. What differs from our expectations furthermore is the rather low speed these buses have compared to our regular ones. Without a bus driver, how can I tell it to stop for me? Will it halt when I try to cross the road? And what if I want to leave the bus? There ought to be some sort of interaction with it. Next to these two types, there are several other types of automated or autonomous vehicles. Depending on the location they operate, whether they have a designated track to drive on, how it looks, etc., we have different expectations of these types of vehicles. So there is no one size fits all when it comes to our expectations to automated vehicles, so we need tailor-made solutions for all of these. To investigate to what extent we accept and are satisfied with this new technology, most commonly we use questionnaires asking for people's opinion. Evidently, the answers they provide are subjective and also often involves opinions about future automated driving systems they actually haven't experienced yet. There is however also the option to gather objective data, for instance by means of video recordings, either inside or outside of such a vehicle. With this we can study people's behavior in and around an automated vehicle. And with these two methods, some initial results have been found 